Welcome to the PAS Report Weekly Roundup Podcast. The PAS Report provides an honest analysis on the critical issues that matter to you without the biased media filters. Here's your host, Professor Nicholas Giordano. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the PAS Report Podcast. This is your host, Nick Giordano. Glad you could join me today, and I hope you're having a fantastic week. Before I jump into the topics of this episode, make sure to follow the PAS Report, PASReport.com. Subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode and share this episode with your family and friends and on social media because we are, are going through such a time that it is monumental. I mean, it's historical. We've never seen anything like this. And with so much going on, I am here to cut through the noise, strip away the layers of deception that you're being inundated with. I want to expose the stark realities that are shaping our country today. We are living through dangerous times. And in this episode, I want to dive headfirst into a a few topics that demand our scrutiny. And they're all interwoven together because the ongoing spectacle continues. We now have the fourth indictment of the former president. Now, this isn't a shock. It shouldn't surprise any of you, especially you that regularly listen to this podcast. I said he was going to be indicted on the fourth count with Georgia. It was predictable. I stated it on several occasions. And while half the country is celebrating this, be careful what you wish for. No matter what happens, and this is my fear, whether the former president is found guilty or not guilty, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Either way, irreparable harm is being done to our country and too many are blind to the fate that awaits us. You're not going to like the end result of this, I could guarantee you. And you, you don't go and use untested legal theories to target your political opposition. I want to make it clear, because all you hear from the left and the never Trumpers. Oh, it's part of the Trump cult. You're all part of this cult that supports the former president. Your your blind loyalty. No, my loyalty isn't to one man. Our country is much bigger than just one person. It goes well beyond Trump. Former President Trump is simply a person in a moment of time. What is concerning to me is the damage inflicted on this country that's going to last long after Trump and Biden are gone. And, And the haters don't have the ability to look at the long term. They only see the short term. And the abuses of power are clear as day because on Friday you had the Attorney General of the United States announce that he's appointing U.S. Attorney Weiss as special counsel to investigate Hunter Biden. This is the same David Weiss that has been slow walking the Biden investigation for five years. And he's undermined the investigation at every single level, uh, according to the IRS whistleblowers. We live in an unsettling reality that the Department of Justice is being used as a political tool. It has nothing to do with justice. It has everything to do with protecting the Bidens. And the implication of all this is that justice is being wielded as a tool for power, not the rule of law. Anyone that says that this is about the rule of law and that nobody is above the law, you're fooling yourself. But not only are you, you're lying, you're lying to the American people because this has nothing to do with the law. You are using untested legal theories to target your political opponent. Our republic is being tested in ways that weren't thought possible just 20 years ago. And unfortunately, it seems that everyone, everyone, including the people, have abdicated their responsibilities to this country. Government officials have abdicated their responsibility to serve the people, and they demonstrate that each and every day. Journalists abdicated their responsibilities when they became political activists and stopped reporting the news and the abuses of power of the government. They were supposed to be the fourth estate. They weren't supposed to be the fourth branch of government. You have scientists and medical professionals abdicating their responsibility when they engaged in groupthink and pushed the government narrative without even dare asking questions. Education officials abdicating their responsibility to educate children when they pushed indoctrination over sound academic principles compromising the development of critical thinking skills, well-rounded knowledge that's essential for preparing students to navigate our complex country. You have bureaucrats that abdicated their responsibilities when they infected their work with ideology, when they weaponized the bureaucracy and abused their power. We have abdicated our responsibility, we the people, to be informed, to hold the politicians accountable, to limit government power. Let's be honest, all of us failed. And I want to quickly read a quote by Alexander Titler. He was a Scottish professor of history, lived in the 18th century, and his observation was spot on. He said, a democracy is always temporary in nature. It simply cannot exist as a permanent form of government. 
A democracy will continue to exist up until the time the voters discover that they can vote themselves generous gifts from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always vote for the candidates who promise the most benefits from the public treasury, with the result that every democracy will finally collapse due to loose fiscal policy, which is always followed by dictatorship. The average age of the world's greatest civilizations from beginning of history has been about 200 years. During those 200 years, these nations always progress through the following sequence, from bondage to spiritual faith. From spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, from dependence back into bondage. Now, some say it was Tocqueville that said that, but whoever said it, it certainly was worth listening to. We are a republic. We have democratic principles built into the system. The founders institutionalized numerous safeguards into the system in order to prevent our demise, to prevent a repeat of the mistakes made by previous nations. But what we are witnessing is those safeguards are beginning to buckle. And from where I'm standing right now, that shiny city on a hill that Reagan spoke about, well, that moment may have sailed. All the things that made America an exceptional nation, they may now be the thing of the past. Because we are in a new era. We are witnessing an unparalleled assault on long-established norms. We are watching... This administration target their political opposition, and for the last several years, we have been witnessing an organized effort to silence those who dissent from the ruling class's approved narratives. Truman warned about this. He warned us about the use of government power to target and silence opposition when he said, once a government is committed to the principles of silencing the voice of opposition, it has only one way to go. And that is down the path of increasingly repressive measures until it becomes a source of terror to all its citizens and creates a country where everyone lives in fear. President Eisenhower warned us about the rising growth and power of the bureaucracy. We were warned time and time again about the dangers of an all-powerful government, starting with the founding fathers up until present day. And yet we have repeatedly ignored those warnings. And it is why we find ourselves in the position that we are in today. We are living through a dangerous moment, and when we come back from this quick break, I'm going to explain the fourth indictment, how it's all a political ruse, and how those in power are destroying our nation. So hang tight. I'll be right back. PAS report listeners, our government is out of control. Criminal tax hikes, hyperinflation, a full-blown recession, it's part of a grand plan. The billions of dollars Biden keeps sending to the corrupt government in Ukraine, the trillions in new taxes he wants to shove down your throat, the electronic banking system crash that resets everyone to zero, checking accounts, saving accounts, 401ks, IRAs, all of it, zero. But you don't have to be a victim. Protect your money and get up to $10,000 in free silver to do it when you call Gold Co. Gold Co's helped protect over $2 billion in gold and silver for people like you and me. They're offering you up to $10,000 in bonus silver when opening a qualified IRA account just for being a supporter of the PAS report. So whether you want to protect 50 grand or a half million or more, this is your opportunity to protect yourself from our out-of-control government. Don't be a victim and call Gold Code today. 855-656-0196. 855-656-0196. Or go to goldcode.com slash PAS report. Welcome back, everyone. So now we have the fourth indictment of the former president. And listen, I would love to talk about something else. I would love to talk about the issues of the day. I would love to provide analysis on the failures of the Republican Party to expand their base, to, to appeal to independence. I would love to talk about all that stuff. Unfortunately, we keep on getting these indictments, these political indictments, because, yes, they are criminal charges against the former president and, and some surrounding the president. However, understand that th- these are not criminal cases. These are political cases. And they're all designed to do one thing. They're designed to destroy President Trump and his supporters. That's what they're designed to do. It's not about the rule of law. It's not about justice. If it was truly about that, they wouldn't be using untested legal theories, theories that have never been proven in court before, that have never been tried in court. It amazes me because they have so much hatred for this man. And listen, I I get why some don't like the former president. I, I get it. I understand it. I may not agree with you, but I actually understand it. However, the hatred that they're consumed with, where they're willing to violate every single norm that's been established in this country, where they're willing to do anything it takes, not only to destroy him, but to thoroughly humiliate him and his supporters on the way out, it really is astonishing to me. 
because I don't think they recognize the damage that they're doing and what's about to unfold and what they're about to unleash. I don't think they recognize that because this is a point of no return. When you look at the charges in the fourth indictment, it's almost laughable. It would be a sad joke. It would be a joke. It would be laughable if it didn't have such serious ramifications. You have President Trump being charged with conspiracy and making false statements. One of the pieces of evidence that Fannie Willis over, the, that's the Georgia DA that she's using, is a tweet sent out by President Trump. And I think it was on December 3rd, where President Trump stated that Georgia is holding live hearings on election fraud and abuses. Are you kidding me? You're saying that that's a conspiracy because he put out a tweet, publicly available information? In another section of the indictment, you have Rudy Giuliani, also indicted under this. He, he's being indicted as a co-conspirator, and, and one of the pieces of, of evidence that they're showing is that Rudy Giuliani sent a retweet of someone else's tweet. The tweet stated, quote, Georgia Patriot call to action. Today is the day we need you to call your state, Senate, and House rep and ask them to sign a petition for a special session. We must have free and fair elections in Georgia, and this is our only path to ensuring every legal vote is counted. Are you kidding me? And in the indictment, it says that this was an overt act to furtherance of the conspiracy. W what is going on here? What is happening here? And you look through this whole indictment, it's extraordinarily troubling. They're saying that the reason that Donald Trump is guilty of these crimes is because he falsely declared victory and falsely claimed voter fraud. Well, no, you, there's nothing in our Constitution that says that you can't declare victory. I mean, Hillary Clinton wrote a friggin' 700-page book on how she really won in 2016, but it was really the Russians and the Macedonian content miners that were the ones that obstructed, and she blamed everyone and everything for her loss. This is not... A criminal case. This is a bid to nullify the Constitution of the United States. And I encourage everyone to read the indictment themselves, because in another part of the indictment, it points to another tweet as evidence that President Trump sent out at the time. And in this tweet, President Trump calls on the Georgia governor, Brian Kemp, as well as the lieutenant governor, that they could solve the problem in Georgia, they, that they have to call special session, and they need to have strong signature verification for the ballots. This is what Fannie Willis is using as evidence to say that President Trump gained, engaged in a conspiracy being charged under RICO law statutes that have been used to take down the mafia, but this is what she's pointing to as evidence, publicly available Twitter feeds. That's the amazing part. This is what she's calling as conspiracy. Well, no, he, he was airing his grievances in public. And it really amazes me of what we're witnessing in another section of this indictment. Again, this political indictment, not a criminal indictment. It's a political indictment. Fannie Willis stated that President Trump met with the Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, Brian Cutler, in the Oval Office at the White House and discussed building a special session of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. This was an overt act to furtherance of the conspiracy. You, again, I mean, this is insane. On or between the 3rd of December 2020 and the 26th day of December 2020, Donald Trump placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate, Butch Miller. This was an overt act to furtherance of conspiracy. So you're not allowed to make phone calls anymore. On the 5th day of December, Donald Trump placed a telephone call to the Georgia Governor Brian Kemp and solicited Kemp to hold a special session of the legislature. Then the amazing part, so false statement, this they're saying is a false statement, that poll watchers and media at State Farm Arena were told late in the evening of November 3rd, 2020, that the vote count was being suspended until the next morning and to go home because of a major water main break. Like, that literally happened. That that, And now they're saying that's a false statement. That actually happened. There was a water main break, quote-unquote, early in the day that shut down voting and counting. And then in the evening, you had employees say, go home. That was reported by every single major network. It's not like, but they're saying now it's a false statement that that was put out there. Why is that a false statement? Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation Departments and Agencies, State Government and County and City Law Enforcement Agency. This was an act of racketeering activity. An act of racketeering 
activity, an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Okay, apparently what's going on here is we now criminalize speech. That, that's what it comes down to. It's an indictment that criminalizes everyone's speech. You're not allowed to send text messages on behalf of your boss, or you'll be indicted like Mark Meadows is. And, it, you know, when you look at this, it, we are in the twilight zone because none of it makes sense. I mean, I, I read through this indictment. It's a bunch of crap, but it's doing its job, right? We're talking about it. This is the fourth indictment of the former president. Running for president is usually more than one person can handle. Having one criminal case is more than one person can handle. Imagine running for president and having four criminal cases against you. And that's the point, isn't it? It's not about the rule of law. It's a shock and awe campaign of indictments. Tie the president up, put him on trial, make it a show trial, right? That This is what it's all about. Let's make it a show so that we could try and embarrass him, thoroughly embarrass him, hope that juries convict, but even if they don't convict, they kind of serve their purpose, right? Serve as the distraction. Get President Trump off the campaign trail. Try and shut him down. Make him use all his campaign funds to actually spend on his attorneys and not on any type of advertising, voter outreach, getting voters to the polls. There's much more than people realize of what's going on. And do you think that anyone on the Republican side is ever going to question the results of an election again? Do you think that that may be the goal here? See, Republicans are feckless. They're weak. And now they're going to be afraid. Rather than stand up to this monstrosity, rather than push back and say, you know what, Department of Justice, if you're going to be weaponized, we're cutting off funding. You know what, Georgia, if you're going to weaponize your Justice Department, we're going to cut off the grant funding that your police departments receive. Rather than actually do that, Republicans will just roll over. Listen, When it comes to the idea of massive fraud and whether it have changed the results of the election, whatever, you could argue that all day long. What you cannot dispute is the interference that was played before the election even kicked off. You you cannot dispute the fact that you had intelligence officials come out saying Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation, preventing it from actually being spoken in the mainstream press, giving Biden a defense in the debate. What you can't dispute is that Zuckerberg invested over $400 million to take over local election operations, where Democrats got, what, 80%, 90% of their money? And what we can't ignore is that every single state changed their voting systems. Every single state because of the coronavirus, because of the pandemic. And yet we're supposed to pretend that these elections went off flawlessly? There weren't any problems? There weren't any issues? I mean, one of the huge red flags was the number of rejected ballots. You had all these new people infused into the voting system, and yet the number of rejected ballots were actually less than in normal times. That doesn't make any sense. First-time voters are going to make mistakes on ballots, but they they fill them out perfectly. Now, is that evidence that the outcome of the election would have been different? No, it's not evidence of that. Okay, but what I am talking about is we have the absolute right to ask questions. And when we, we see the system is being weaponized, when we see the abuses of power. There needs to be people held accountable. We need to know, was there any coordination between Fannie Willis, the district attorney of of Fulton County, and Jack Smith, the special counsel on the federal level? This is something Congress, the House Republicans, need to get an answer to immediately. Was there coordination between the two? And if so, what was that coordination? We also need to start looking at real accountability. This case, the Georgia case, I do believe will be thrown out. I don't think it's even going to get to trial. That's how weak it it seems to be, unless Fannie Wills provides evidence that we're not aware of yet. But what I will say is that if it's as weak as what we're reading in the indictments, not only should the case be thrown out, but Fannie Willis should be barred from ever practicing law again. She should be fired and prosecuted for misuse of government power, abuse of government power, misuse of government funds. How much did this investigation cost over the last two and a half years? And I'd like to know that answer. So there's a lot here. And the only way we fix it is if we hold people accountable. Not if we weaponize the system and just start targeting Democrats. That's not going to fix the problem. That actually makes it worse. And while it may be appealing and enticing to do something like that, it's not the right response. But you have people calling for that. And I understand those calls. I understand why some may be inclined to say that. But if you want people to trust the system again, that's not the route that we need to take. Unfortunately, nothing else is working. Our voices aren't being heard. 
They're being ignored. They're being targeted. And when we get back, I'm going to show you the flip side of how you have Merrick Garland just overtly in your face saying the rule of law is nothing. It doesn't mean anything. I'm going to appoint a special counsel to protect the Biden. So I'll take that up as soon as we get back from this quick break. PAS Report listeners, hurricane season is almost here and the time to prepare is right now, not when the hurricane hits. When Hurricane Ida hit the Gulf Coast, it destroyed countless homes and left many without access to food and clean water. Millions lost power, some for weeks. The floods that followed the hurricane washed out roads, made it impossible for grocery stores to restock their shelves. Families were desperate. They were waiting for help that was slow to arrive. But what if you didn't have to rely on FEMA to provide for your family during a crisis? The answer is simple. Be prepared with emergency food kits from 4Patriots. They're long-lasting and delicious food options are specifically designed to provide you and your loved ones with the sustenance you need when you need it most. And these food kits are hand-packed in the USA, last up to 25 years, compact inside covert storage totes, include a wide variety of delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, and they're backed by thousands of five-star customer reviews. For Patriots, survival food is not just for natural disasters. In today's world of uncertain supply chains and unpredictable emergencies, it's more important than ever to have a backup plan. Whether it's temporary power outage, a winter blizzard, rising food costs, you can rest easy knowing that you have a reliable source of food to see you through. And right now, you go to 4 use code PAS to get 10% off your first purchase on anything in the store, including the emergency food supply kits that are designed to last up to 25 years. Just go to 4 use code PAS to get 10% off your first purchase of 4 Patriots survival food. Welcome back, everyone. Now let's juxtapose what's going on with Trump with what's happening with President Biden. Because there's still a document investigation that's going on into President Biden. Have you heard anything about that document investigation? No. Nope. President Trump's document investigation was wrapped up in six months. Charges and all. But we haven't heard a peep out of the special counsel. As everything leaks out against the former president, I mean, again, the indictment leaked out before it was actually signed off of, before the grand jury actually voted on it, the indictment was leaked out in Georgia. Why doesn't anything ever leak out about President Biden? Why does it take whistleblowers to reveal everything? Not internal leaks, Coming from the Department of Justice? Oh, that's right, because the Department of Justice is President Biden's secret protective agency. That's why. That's what it's become. That's why it exists now. You have the FBI that ran interference for President Biden. You have the Secret Service that provided cover to Hunter Biden on numerous occasions. And so you have the Attorney General of the United States, after the entire plea debacle that came up, appointing the very person that was responsible for that plea debacle, the plea bargain debacle, U.S. Attorney David Weiss, is now appointed as a special counsel to investigate Hunter Biden. Now, the reason that you know this is political, well, there's several reasons. First of all, let's look at the plea agreement. The plea agreement, something that most plea agreements never had, at least in my experience, I've never seen a plea agreement that had an immunity clause in it where they can't be prosecuted against any type of crimes, uh, past crimes that had nothing to do with the charges that came in the first place. I've never seen anything like that. Now, the government, the U.S. Attorney's Office, David Weiss's office, is saying that they didn't know that was in there. And so when that came about, they're going to pull this plea agreement. Well, that's a bunch of nonsense, okay? I could guarantee you that the plea agreement was read through several times by both the defense attorneys and the prosecution's team. And there's only two things that could be true when it comes to this plea agreement. Either David Weiss knowingly put that clause into this plea agreement, which shows how corrupt he is, or U.S. Attorney David Weiss is that incompetent, which also shows that he should not be the special counsel, because it's only one of those two things. In any event, Merrick Garland, the Attorney General of the United States, comes out on a Friday afternoon in the middle of summer, in August, to announce this special counsel. Interesting. Several days later, Trump gets indicted. Notice the pattern. Something comes out about Biden, Trump gets indicted. Something comes out of Biden, Trump gets indicted. Something comes out about Biden, information leaks out, Trump gets indicted. Notice this pattern that every several days, the news cycle changes, and it changes back to Trump, and it changes back to his indictment. Do you think that's coincidence? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. However, I come to understand that there's no coincidences in politics. Everything happens for a reason. Everything is intentional. These aren't dumb people. They're dumb to a certain degree. I think Merrick Garland's an idiot. I don't think he has a clue. Okay, but people within the Department of Justice, they're not dumb people. They're they're smart people. They know optics. They understand these things. They just don't care anymore. They don't even have to hide it because nobody's ever held accountable. So you have Merrick Garland announcing the appointment of a special counsel, which he violated 
the actual provision because you're supposed to appoint someone from outside of the government. It's not supposed to be a current government prosecutor. It's not supposed to be a current government attorney, especially one that's been investigating the Bidens or Hunter Biden for five years. So right there alone, that's a violation. Will anything happen with it? I can't tell you that. So not only is U.S. Attorney Weiss not supposed to be serving as the special counsel, but Merrick Garland's announcement states that it is narrowly focused on Hunter Biden, not the Biden family business. It's narrowly focused on Hunter Biden, and that's it. It's not to expand beyond that scope. That's how you know it's a ruse, because let's be honest here. It's not about Hunter Biden. Nobody cares about Hunter Biden. Democrats love to be like, oh, well, Hunter Biden's not the president. He has nothing to do with the president. No, everything goes back to the big guy, the big guy. He was the one that was in charge. He was the one that was using his position of power in order to make money. He was the one enabling his crack addicted son to go around to collect cash. And the Biden family reaped all the rewards. So this is about the big guy, but the special counsel is not going to investigate the big guy because it's not about the law. It's about protecting President Biden. That's what it comes down to. Then you look at the special counsel himself. He had five years, five years to investigate Hunter Biden, five years. And he came up with two misdemeanor tax charges. That's it. Two misdemeanor tax charges. And he throws away the gun violation. That's all. That's all he had. And five years of investigating him. We have FBI whistleblowers. We have IRS whistleblowers that have come forward stating that they were hampered throughout the investigation. There were things that they were not allowed to do. They weren't allowed to talk to Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden was given the heads up several times uh, uh, that they wanted to talk. You have the storage facility where you had the attorney's office actually contact Biden's defense team saying, hey, yeah, we want to search that uh, storage facility. We're going to get a warrant for it eventually. But Hey, I mean, wink and nod, I'm putting words in their mouth. Clean the storage unit unit out of any type of evidence of crimes because we're going to be searching it sooner or later. I mean, this was what was going on. They wouldn't allow the pool house to be searched on the Biden property because uh, of optics. It's clear what's taking place. And that's why this is a dangerous moment. Because on one side, everything they've accused Trump of. Remember, Trump was the authoritarian, right? When he was going to come into office... You just, all you have to do is go back to the headlines. When Trump was nominated and then when he was elected into the presidency of the United States, headline after headline said, he's going to target his political opponents. He's going to jail his political opponents. He's going to throw the the ones that criticize him in jail. He's going to silence his opposition. He's an authoritarian. He's a dictator. He's a fascist. He's going to use the FBI as his own police force. He's going to use the powers of government, the Department of Justice. Notice that everything they accused the former president of, they themselves are guilty of. He's going to start World War III when it came to Trump. Everything they accused the former president of, they themselves are guilty of. And they're willing to burn everything down in order to make a statement that you do not cross the powers that be. If you cross the powers that be, in the words of Chuck Schumer, they have six ways from Sunday to get back at you. And you are witnessing this in play now. You're witnessing it in real time. And it's at our expense. And it doesn't matter what your ideological beliefs are. It doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican. It's completely irrelevant. All of us are going to suffer the ramifications of these actions for long after Trump and Biden. All of us will suffer them because you destroyed this system. That's what it comes down to. And Benjamin Franklin once stated that this constitution can only end in despotism when the people shall become so corrupted as to need a despotic government being incapable of any other. And that's the route we're on. Because so many of you out there have called for the abuses of power, all because you didn't like one man. As I said at the beginning, we've all abdicated our responsibility. We're all culpable in this. And unfortunately, I don't see an easy way out. I don't see an easy way to to go back to the way it was. Hopefully we will. And hopefully I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. With that being said, if you found the podcast informative, please give it a five-star rating in any podcast platform that allows it. Take 30 seconds to write a review. And I appreciate if you share this episode with your family and friends and on social media. I want to thank you for joining me, and I'll be back on Monday with another great episode of the PAS Report Podcast. Thank you for listening to the PAS Report Weekly Roundup Podcast. Podcast. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Be sure to rate, share, and subscribe to the podcast. 
so you'll never miss an episode. Also, visit PASReport.com and follow us on Twitter at PASReport. 